Hello, I'm the Resolute Cartographer, and this is the 16th video in my Fallout 76 Post Wastelanders main quest series. Here we are at the top of the world, and we're about to start the quest Key to the Past by talking to Rose. In the last video, we did the quest Flavors of Mayhem, and uh, we learned about all the different uh, raider bands. This time, we're going to have to start finding keys to the stash here at the uh, Pleasant Valley Ski Resort. So, let's go talk to Rose. All of this, of course, to find the thing that uh, Hank Madigan here was carrying when he was killed by the raiders. Hey, uh, I feel like I trust you enough now to let you in on a little secret. I'm gonna try to do this without being inside of her. Hey, uh, I feel like I trust you enough now to let you in on a little secret. My old raider pals left a cache of treasure behind when they all checked out. Problem is, it's locked away and I can't get in there. Double problem, no one trusted each other enough to give anyone complete access to the treasure. Is this the treasure of Appalachia? No way! That legend predates all the bombs, the yelling, the ferals, all of that. This treasure belonged to the gangs, all of them. I don't actually know what's in it, because i never seen it. But it's gotta be good, right? Raider loot up the wazoo! Sounds like you're playing me. Oh, wow! The Raider robot is lying <laughs> and being dishonest. You should just write that up and pick it fences and get it published. Listen, <laughs> didn't I deliver last time with karma, exploding bait, and all of that? So let's just do it again. What's in this for me? You just have to do a few teensy tiny, well, a lot of things really. Then we'll have ourselves access to all that wonderful treasure. I'll probably even give you a fair share of the loot. Promise. How does that work? Anyone that had a key wouldn't need the others. So they split up the key. See, each gang's leader had a holotape with their own personal password on it. Find them all so I can batch them together and make the master key. It's more technical than that, but you wouldn't understand. Check out Blackwater Mine first. That's the last place we heard from Freddie Lang, the leader of the Blackwater Bandits. Pretty sure she had a terminal there. Might be worth a look-see. All right, so we got to go back to the Blackwater Mine. Actually, I don't think we've been to the Blackwater Mine yet. No, we've done one of the Blackwater Mine's uh, things and stealing from the Super Mutants, but we have not actually been to their hideout yet. Um, so their hideout is actually right down here. It's not too far from the White Spring Resort, so I'm just going to fast travel back to my camp here on the highway. All right, I apologize if you hear any uh, loud purring or um, tiny little meows or me yelling in pain. I've got a two-month-old kitten that is currently crawling around on my shoulders. Uh, one second, let me get him off my shoulders. There we go. Okay, so let's uh, head down the highway. And again, we're heading right down here. Okay. And it's showing up as that door on the map, so let's just head down this way. Let me scrap anything I've got. And store all that here. Okay. I can hear a uh, scorched or feral ghoul officer around here somewhere. One of the code officers, I mean. Which is more so just annoying at this point in the game because there's nothing we can do with uh, the code piece that it's currently carrying on it. So we'll just keep on heading down this way. Now again, I'm going to avoid the, uh, the train wreck here if I can. Mostly, at least. <laughs> because it is uh, overrun by hostile robots that were likely on board the train. There we go. They were likely guarding the, the uh, train. They're on board, and as soon as the train crashed, they came out and started actually protecting the wreck of the train. Okay. I keep forgetting I don't have marsupial on this character, so I'm trying to make jumps that I can't. <laughs> Good lord. These things are creaking like I'm on the uh, New River Gorge Bridge. And that is definitely not this type of sound you would hear with a bunch of train carriages lying on their side. Anyway. Alright, so this is the train station here. The new Appalachian train yard, I believe. We'll find out soon enough. But yeah, you can see they got a post office, a bank, and a couple other little structures. Yep, new Appalachian Central train yard. And if we come inside uh, this area, can we actually come in all the way here? Yeah. This is an old bank. Nope. This bank was robbed, I think, on the day of the bombs. I can't remember off the top of my head. Okay, Scout's Life 10. 
That's okay. <laughs> Maintaining your gear. So when the scouts are out there needing to work on their uh, on their mini nukes with their fat man. Okay, they got a submachine gun, duffel bag, and some of these safes are still full of cash and other things like this one. Okay, and I've definitely got another feral ghoul out there somewhere. Okay, I'm gonna take this junk. And eh, may as well take the golf club too, I can break it down. But yeah, there are a few safes in here. Some of them are too heavily locked for the moment, but okay. And I think there's at least two more in here. One that's level two and one that's level three, but I can't remember off the top of my head. And I can't seem to find them either, so maybe not. Maybe I'm misremembering that. Anyway, I think there's actually a note over by this one. Or, oh no, never mind. The note is up in the train tower because they had an insider here. Uh, why don't we just go ahead and see if we can't find that note real quick just so we can check off that little bit of lore that was on this path. Oop. Dead feral ghoul back there. But there are a lot of them out here. And in making all this noise, I'm kind of poking the hornet's nest. Man, why even use vats? From a range of like six feet, I'm getting a like a 30% chance of hitting one of these guys, but if I just don't even aim, I'm still more likely to hit them. Okay. Oh, vegetable starch, that's adhesive. Okay. Let's head over here. And get up into the train into the train tower here. Okay, here we go. Terminal. Switch tower operators terminal. Incoming mail, August 12th, 2077. From Carrie Skinner. From everything we've learned, the armored train is scheduled to stop at the new Appalachian Bank on September 28th around 5 a.m. There will be four armed guards with the shipment, two aboard the train, and two riding behind in one of the other cars. It's easy pickings, I promise. I figure a three-way split between you, me, and my brother would be fair if you do your part. So it looks like no September, but we'll see here. Uh, August 14th, 2077. From Carrie Skinner. I got the map of the train yard you sent. It looks like if you can rig switches 4 and 7, we can keep the train on the loaded tracks. When we hit it, the engineer is going to try to gun it out of there, but guess what? Thanks to you, they ain't going anywhere. All you got to do is cover us from one of the switch towers in case someone tries to sneak up on us. Okay. September 10th, 2077 from Carrie Skinner. It took some doing, but we bribed one of the cops that's riding shotgun on the armored train to lay low while my brother takes his place. And get this. He told us that the vault of the bank should be damn full that day. He wanted to make it a four-way split, but we told him no way. We'll pay him just enough to keep his mouth shut. If he tries to blab anything after the job, I'll go around to his place and make sure that he stays quiet permanently. September 25th, 2077 from Carrie Skinner. All right, Al, we're three days from the job, so let's go over this one last time. The train pulls in at 5 a.m. They start loading up the vault car at around 5.15. When they're almost done, that's when we hit them. According to you, they take between 10 to 20 minutes to load, so if you don't see anything happening by 5.35 a.m., then something's gone wrong and you should lay low. If we take the train, we'll load up everything we can in my brother's truck, and we'll meet at the farm. Make sure you delete all this when you're done memorizing. Hang in there, buddy. We're about to get rich. Well, it looks like you didn't delete. October 10th, 2077, from Marlin Reliker, train chainhead supervisor. Al, we need you to stop what you're doing and let the workers continue the cleanup of the new Appalachian Central train yard. Then come down to the central office right away. There's a man here from the federal authorities that has a few questions for you. Oh, and bring all your paperwork for the past three months, please. We've already backed up the emails on your terminal, so there's no need to bring those with you. See you soon. Ooh. <laughs> well, it looks like Al Wartzik was screwed, so... I guess this heist took place October 1st, but they hadn't done anything to clean up the train yard by the end? I mean, that's kind of crazy, right? It was three weeks between the, uh, between this bank job here and the uh, end of the world, and they don't seem to have done anything to clean up the train yard. Now, of course, this was around the same time as all the riots happening down in uh, the southern part of Appalachia, so maybe it was simply the case that they just didn't have the resources to deal with this when they were having to try to put down the rioting miners. I don't know. Anyway. Let's keep on keeping on down this way. So we'll cut back over to the highway. Oh. 
There we go. Jeez. There are a lot of feral ghouls here. Now, I've seen, I think, settlers down here below the bridge, or maybe Brotherhood members. Well, it looks like this time it's Scorched and Liberator bots. Well, that's unfortunate. And somehow Liberator Mark 1s are giving me a run for my money. Partially because I can't seem to hit anything today. <laughs> there we go. Okay, there's another Scorched, and that thing's still trying to kill me. There we go. Okay, so that's cleared the way a little bit. Stimpak? I know I've got Stimpaks, or at least I think I've got Stimpaks. Uh, yeah, I do. Let me uh, assign that to favorites, but I actually don't want to use that given I've only got two of them. Let's see. Just drink some water. Okay. Let's keep moving. Now, this place looks like it's uh, owned by the Super Mutants, and that's because it sometimes can be, I believe. And they have a nearby outpost as well. It's uh, that little... Oh. Another Scorched. I was figuring I'd be able to take advantage of the fighting between the Scorched and the Liberators, but it seems that uh, I ended up having to do most of the killing here. Uh, but as I was saying before, the, uh, the Super Mutants do have an outpost over there. It shows up on the compass as that, that uh, radiation marker. Anyway, though, uh, let's keep heading down this way. So, the actual uh, Blackwater Mine is back a little ways from the road, so we're going to make sure that we stop off on the White Springs train station to add a, uh, a safe, saf safe, sorry, a safe fast travel point over here. Man, there are just times of day where things are just absolutely beautiful. Huh, looks like there's some fighting going on at the White Spring. I guess it would be feral ghouls versus the robots. Okay, here we are at White Spring Station. I'm gonna do a typical uh, scrap work real quick here. Except for again, I keep forgetting I don't have marsupial. There we go. Alright, let's get moving again and uh, head on up to Blackwater Mine. Now, it's plainly obvious as we come up on this site that this was a place that was controlled by the raiders. I mean, they've got this first watchtower out here. And they've got that barrier there. All of these covered with the spikes of the raiders. Got this, uh... This tractor trailer thing here. Let's see, we got an uh, explosives crate. Take that frag grenade. I, it's funny because in uh, most of my other characters, I only take plasma grenades now because of the uh, amount of damage they do. And the fact that explosives do all have a weight to them, so I typically try to not load up on anything that isn't going to do the most amount of damage for the amount of weight that I'm carrying. But this guy doesn't have access to that many plasma grenades at the moment. Okay, mole miners. So, because of the recent released content on the Atomic Shop of the Garahan uh, employee bundle or whatever, which included an outfit that is very similar to the Mole Miner outfit. I've come to the conclusion that the Mole Miners were Garahan Miners. And it also just makes sense because when you read Daniel Hornwright's terminal over at Hornwright Industrial, he basically talks about the fact that he's already eliminated all of his human miners with uh, auto miners. So anytime you find these guys, they either worked for uh, Garahan Mining or maybe for some other mining company, like AMS, for example. Okay, so I can't pick that. I don't have a high enough luck pick skill. It's not like we actually have to come in here. There's just some nice loot. And I also want to basically eliminate the uh, mole miner threat before we move into the mine itself. Let's see. He's probably up here, up here on the roof. There we go. Oof, man, I've only got, uh, what is that, 58 bullets left with this gun? And there's a lot of enemies in this mine. And still more mole miners to come, so let me not put my gun away. Oh, there we go. Okay, another one down. But my, uh, danger says that there's still more here. Okay, where is that guy? Well, there's a guy. 
And where are you? Okay, and the last one, is it up here? No? Where are you? There you are! Ooh. Man, that was close. Okay. But there's definitely still something else here. There we go. Okay, we're safe now. Mole miners have been dealt with, at least the ones out here. And let me take a do a quick scrapping. Okay. Let's get moving. Got a new shotgun that's level 15 rather than the level 5 one I was using. Of course, my ow! Ah, sorry, cat is on my shoulder. Ow! 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 He only weighs two pounds, but he's uh, tiny little claws. Whew. Okay. So we got Greetings. the uh, auto foreman. Detection error. System is currently offline. Authorization denied until ventilation process is complete. Please return later. <laughs> okay. So yeah, he's a little bit of the story of what happened to this place. Alright. We got a computer here. And a holotape. Let's play the holotape. So, I, uh, I found this old holotape to record onto. Look, I know this is stupid. You can't hear me. Not anymore. I don't know. Maybe this is more for me. I just... Oh, miss you, Lucy. More than you could ever imagine. And I can't help but feel... responsible. Somehow. They were firing up the snowmakers and I knew you didn't like skiing, so... I didn't even mention I was going. <laughs> I thought you'd talk me out of it. I wish I had told you, though. We're both hard-headed, but one of our stubborn asses would have caved, and then... Uh, we'd be together one way or the other. Maybe it's for the best. These people probably wouldn't understand us either. I've had to get even tougher than before. I have had to steal and kill. Worse still, I've had to hide who I am behind this facade. I'm alive, I guess. But who am I now? Am I still the same Alfredi you knew? Would you even still like me? Oh, I hope you'd understand. You gotta be strong to survive. And if that means playing mean and leading a bunch of other monsters to prey on the weak, then that's what I gotta do. are getting back. I better go. Put that mean face back on. I wish the bombs never took you from me, Lucy. I love you. Always will. A lot of insight there into the background of Freddie Lang and basically the Raiders in general. They were normal people before the bombs. They'd been up there at the Pleasant Valley Resort, and they had to become the people they became. Now, I say they had to become, they didn't really have to. You got a lot of people that survived the bombs and didn't become raiders, but I will say that the people that did become raiders had to basically lose some of their humanity and who they were before the bombs. Now, one thing I want to note real quick is there's an annoying audio glitch that I have been getting here 
and that I've got inside Sam Blackwell's abandoned bunker, well, the abandoned waste dump, I mean, part of his bunker, and within the glass cavern. It is this strange clicking noise that happens once every few seconds. I'm going to remove it as much as I can because it really does disrupt the listening experience when you're playing the game. Uh, it's very unsettling and uh, unpleasant. So anyway, let's uh, listen to Blackwater Mine Orientation. This is Foreman Hibbs, United States Department of Energy. If you're hearing this, then welcome aboard and all that. I'm sure the human resources folks have got you situated, but there's one thing I need to make sure we've drilled into you. So you gotta get it again. Blackwater Mine is a government uranium site. That means you're a federal employee now. That was weird. The uh, audio just seemed to stop there. I don't think that was the end of it. Uh, let me just use the rest of these recipes real quick. But anyway, so yeah, we're talking about how this place had been taken over by the Department of Energy because this was a uranium mine. Sorry, my cat is chewing on my headphone cable. Okay. You're going to hang out in my lap for a while, not on my shoulders. Here we go. Blackwater Bandits Terminal. Now property of the Blackwater Bandits. Don't delete anything from here. Freddy. Freddy Lang's Logs. Help! Actually, that I think is the last... Yeah, that's the last one. Uh-oh. Let's listen to Rose. Rose here. Not that I'm a creep, but I was watching you through the viewfinder again and saw you enter the mine. Can you still hear me? Ah, whatever. It's not like you can radio back. Anywho, I recall we completely lost track of the Blackwater Bandits back in 96. <sighs> Freddy wasn't looking too good last time we saw her alive. Not her usual bright and spirited self. Real sick. Her hair looked awful. Something happened in that mine hideout of theirs. Not sure what, but if you can figure it out, I bet you'd be able to track down that key fragment. I'll catch up with you when I see you crawl out of that cave. All right, so yeah, we actually read the last log first, so let's go to the proper first log, finally in. We finally correct the password to this thing. It was pumpernickel, like the bread. The previous foreman's locker hadn't been cleaned out and we found it written on a crumpled note in there. Lucky fine, huh? That stupid robot outside wouldn't have any help. The guys seem to like him, though, so I guess we're keeping him around. Anyway, now it's my terminal, and as the leader of this ragtag group of bandits, I'm using it as my own log for whatever comes to mind. Ever since I lost her to the war, I've got no one to confide in, no one to trust with my thoughts. This is the closest thing I've got now. I swear, if one of those a-holes ruins this for me, I'll send them packing with a, bu with a bullet in the back of their head. Miss you. Miss you so much, Lucy. If you only knew what we've had to become. Sometimes I wonder. Maybe it's for the best you checked out when you did so you didn't have to see me this way. Then again, I'm really good at what I do. It's scary how naturally burglary comes to me. And how tough I've become. I mean, I've always had to be tough, but you knew that. Growing up where we did, people gave us crap for who we were. It usually took me handing out a fat lip or a black eye to make people respect me. Guess I've carried that into my new life. You'd be proud of that at least. I stood up, took charge, I'm leading. They actually like me. They know better than to come on to me, and I don't have to say nothing no more. If you're watching, somehow, just know that everything I do, I do to survive. Don't hate me. Die Hard's visit. Maggie came down with some of her Die Hard losers to check out the new place. She said she wants to gather up everyone's key fragments to make some sort of backup copies in case something happens to one of them. Or some BS like that. F that. We all know you had a problem with the boss man Thorpe, Maggie. You're lucky we cut you in on the cash, but somehow you keep us all supplied with Kims, so yeah. Still, we ain't gotta hand over all our keys so you can run off with all our stuff. Nice try, but no way. Good haul. Hit up a band of travelers coming through the mountains. Got a lot of good loot and supplies off it. They said they were hauling good to some survivors over the hills. We should check out that settlement soon. One of them looked like you. I hesitated, just briefly. She pleaded for her life, started screaming. I had to do it, or she'd attract others. Or who knows what. Maybe I shouldn't have. These mines are a good hideout. No one comes looking for us here anyway. In other news, I had to shoot Frank dead. He thought he could take a little off the top and keep it for himself. 
Now he's sharing his cash with everyone as a reminder not to get greedy. Low on Kim's. I don't know what it is, maybe it's just a bad flu or something, but we're all starting to ache and feel weak. We were using Kim's to offset the effects, but it's taking a long time to get over it without any doctors around, and we're almost out. The Cutthroats still have a ton of Kim's, especially now that the diehards are bringing them all to the top of the world. I think they're willing to trade us a case of Kim's for the mini nukes we stole off those Brotherhood of Steel guys. I know, I told you no more Kim's, but that was long ago, and the world's a different place, babe. I'm only taking what I need to get through the day with this illness. People getting sick. Lots of people getting real sick now. It's been a while and it's not going away. My hair's been falling out, skin's peeling, I can't eat. Wish I could find out who I exposed us to this freaking plague so I could kill him myself. You told me to never give up, love. I won't. I'll get through this. Just like everything else, I'm going to do you proud. And here we get to the cause of their illness. Radiation leak. That asshole. I told everyone, no messing with the machines down in the mine. We didn't know what they did, and the last thing we need is our new home collapsing. Guess what, though? Rob came clean after I threatened to neuter him. He just had to get drunk and mess with that stupid machine. Want to know what it does? It leaks radiation all over the place, apparently. And he's been tinkering with it in secret for months. He caused a massive leak, and now people are dying because of him. We got people who look like corpses, still writhing around but not responding. At least Rob's not moving anymore. Trying to stay strong, trying not to give up. And help. Not giving up. Getting harder to think straight. Skin glowing. So sick. I tried. Feels good to be down in the mine. Warmer. Near the radiation. Just gonna sleep there. Wait for whatever. Okay, so she, yeah, she was becoming a glowing one, it seems. Uh, let's see, anything else in here? Oh yes, there's actually still more information on the terminal. Foreman's reports. Report from July 9th, 2077. Uranium yields have been way up. The boys have tweaked those extractor machines so that they're pulling the stuff in at a faster rate than an army of miners ever could. It's much safer, too. This spells good news for us down here at our level. With profits way up, it's bound to come trickling down to us. Can't wait to see a fleet of new shiny Corvegas driving into work. And July 20th, 2077. Caught some of the crew laughing about the job this morning. Vinny was even sleeping. I hated to do it, but I had to write him up. The guy used to be such a powerhouse, but he says he's finished all his hauls an hour into the job today. I get it that the machines practically run themselves and produce a lot less waste, but there's still plenty to do around here. They need constant supervision. There are buttons to press and meters to monitor. Incident report. Chet Bronson slipped and took a spill in Tunnel 3. He'll be laid up for a while, but frankly, I don't know if we'll be able to keep him on the staff. We have too much on the payroll as it is. July 28th, 2077. Orders came from on high today. We just had to let go of about 30 of our guys today. It's just some of the chaff. These guys have been slacking off for a while now, so it's probably for the best. We'll be fine without them. This job could be done with a crew of a dozen if we need to. I tell you, the marvels of modern engineering just make life easier. August 5th, 2077. Called the crew together this morning to chat about next week's meeting with the bigwigs. Everyone's to be on their best behavior, and we're going to whip this operation into shape big time before their arrival. This mine's going to shine. Some of the guys are understandably worried after the layoffs, but I assured them that their jobs are not in danger. We're going to show the suits how tight a crew can work in concert with the state-of-the-art technology to be the highest yield uranium mine in the country, if not the world. And August 13th, 2077. Screw this, I moved all the way to West Virginia for this job when I was perfectly happy in Pittsburgh. I've been here for hardly a year and a half and they replaced me with that bucket of bolts? They said it was cheaper. Like anyone's gonna take orders from a robot. I should have seen this coming when they offered me what they did and then when I get here, I found out they're building the whole thing to practically run itself. What a crock. I told them I'd wipe this terminal, but I'm leaving these reports as a lesson to the next guy they hire when that stupid robot can't hack it. Okay, and production reports. I uh, cannot access data. Okay. So that's all the lore here. Let's move into the mine so we can go find Freddy Lang and her fragment of the key. Actually, let's head up here real quick. I can't remember if we headed up here yet or not. We got a safe here, so probably not. Oh, I can't open it anyway. Okay. Nothing else to see. So, let's get over here. Can we open this? Decontamination. Yeah, let's press the button. There we go, got rid of the radiation. Okay, and let me heal myself real quick. 
All right, let's get in here. Now we're probably going to find some more... Oh, there's a mole rat. I was going to say we're going to find some more mole miners. We're also going to find feral ghouls, I believe. Oh. And, of course, Freddy Lang herself, as I believe a glowing one, given that she's actually... Her skin was glowing. We'll find out to be sure, though, when we get deeper in here. Now you can see that the raiders had taken over this chunk of the mine from the fact that their decorations are up. Let's check up here. Nope, can't do anything over here. Just a bag with some junk in it. Let's come through here. Dead uh, mole miners. Take the shotgun shells from them. And let's head off this way. Nope. Now there's another dead mole miner. It's hard to tell if these mole miners were the miners that were working here. If they even still had miners working here. I mean, that last log was from mid-August 2077. Uh, so there was still a couple months before the bombs. Uh, let's see, can we... let's check this out. So there's still a couple months before the bombs. Um, so it's hard to tell if they had actually automated all the jobs. Or what, you know, if uh, these people were still on the site and they just automated away the foreman's job. Unfortunately, it looks like I can't jump that, so we're going to have to head through this tunnel. But, plenty of shotgun shells. Got a miner's key here. I think that, yeah, it, it's a random site, but it'll tell you to go to a miner's locker at uh, a mining site. In this case, Hornwright testing site number two. Okay, so they're fighting Freddy Lang, I believe. As is uh, tradition. Basically, every time I've come up here, she's uh, in here fighting mole miners. I'll leave them to fight for just a minute, because she'll finish them off, and then we'll go after her. But they'll have done a little bit of damage to her, I think. Alright, well, I think this one... This one doesn't seem to really notice that she's in there. Okay, uh... Oh, crap. Go. Okay, seems up. There we go. I was gonna say something seems to be shooting at me, and I turn around and he's right there. Okay. Well, she's back there clearly. Let's see. At least I got the stim packs on uh, hockey now. Oh. Sh okay, I thought she had had her arms blown, but no. She's just got them tucked into her side. I was going to say, that would have been nice of the mole miners to leave her basically unarmed. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> let's go past... Okay, uh, Radex. Definitely some, need some Radex. And, okay. There she is, okay, but... There's a mole miner trapped in that cage. Looks like her arms were crippled, though. Okay. Let's take care of this mole miner. Jeez. Okay, and I can't think that terminal would have opened this door, too. We got the Blackwater Bandits key fragment. And some other stuff here. See, the glowing meat. I've always been suspicious of glowing meat, because you find it on a lot of creatures that are glowing. But that includes feral ghouls. So is glowing meat potentially even ghoul meat? Because that's disgusting, if that's the case. Uh, okay. A little bit of cannibalism there, even though it doesn't count it as cannibalism. Alright, let's see some shotgun shells. Let's check out the water systems monitoring. Okay, water one status, or pump one status, offline since December 3rd, 2022. What? So we've got this pump that's just going to be working here for about another year or so. Let's see. Pump two, December 3rd, 2022. Exterior pump status. Offline since December 3rd, 2022. Um, that's weird. 2022. Water level status. Water levels currently uninhabitable, overflowing, light pooling, and... Oh, un okay. It's different status system. It's like, what? <laughs> it's uninhabitable. Okay, the mine is flooded. Water radioactivity status. It is at 50k uh, millirems. Likely to develop cancerous organs if you go inside it. Okay. And that room door control is for this room. 
You take that fan. Okay. Is that... No, I've got a... I think a, that's just... That shotgun is in comparison to a shotgun that... Er, is in comparison to my Somerset Special. Okay. Alright, let's get out of here. Because, yeah, there, there is more to see in this mine, but I don't think there's really more lore. There's the uh, daily that takes place here, Radiation Rumble. I think that's the right one. Anyway, uh... Okay. There goes that mole miner. Take his shotgun shells. Okay, and let's see. Actually, you know what? Let's uh, heal up slightly. Okay. Oh. Okay, I didn't take any fall damage from that fall anyway. I was worried that I would drop down and just drop dead. Anyway, let's head back out through here and walk out of this mine. It might be Uranium Fever is the name of the daily here. I can't remember off the top of my head. Anyway, here we go. Alright, we're leaving the mine. So, oh, mole miners are back. Let's see if Rose notices us as we walk out of this. next. They had a camp out near the Devil's Backbone, so they could keep an eye out along the road from the southeast. We never did find out what happened to them. We were spread pretty thin by the time they disappeared. Someone or something probably got to them. Maybe they left a note behind, or some other clue. They were real outdoorsy types, like camping and hunting, so be careful searching the camp for their piece of the key. If it wasn't obvious, they were really into traps. Yeah, I mean, from the name Trappers, you've kind of to zoom that. Okay, so that finishes the Blackwater Bandits part of Key to the Past. In the next video, we're going to head on up to the Trappers Camp, which is all the way over here. And the actual key fragment itself is over here in Huntersville. So this is going to be an interesting video, because we're going to, first of all, have to find our way over here. My guess is we're going to go to the NIRA and then head on over 107. Uh, the Devil's Backbone is somewhere right around here. It's an interesting feature that's based on a real-world location. Anyway. Uh, this has been the Resolute Cartographer. Thanks for watching. I'll see you again next time.